right, so if you are new to Studio One and Personas and you want to know where to start, so let's uh, take for granted that you have joined Sphere. So if you join Sphere, you get Studio One and you get all of the benefits of all the software offerings that Personas has. So if you go in and you sign up for Sphere, you're going to have to sign up using an email address and then creating a password. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assume that you bought something like an audio box or a Studio 2.4 or maybe even an I.O. Station 2.4 and you want to know how to get started. You've never used Studio One. You've never installed a DAW. So let's start from scratch. So go to the Sphere page and log in with your profile. So you can see here I got my email address and my password. I'm going to say log in. And once you actually log in, you're going to go to the first page and everything that you have, all of the new stuff that Studio, uh, that Personas offers for Studio One is going to be listed here in the new products area. So you can see we've got all sorts of videos and all of the benefits that you get for joining Sphere. It's definitely worth the cost for sure. All right, so now let's say you haven't even installed your interface yet. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you don't plug anything thing in yet. Let's say you've got an audio box and let's say you have an Atom. So don't plug anything in yet. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to products. Okay. And we want to download what's needed for Studio One and for your hardware. So let's go down here. You can see all of the things that come with Sphere. And if I go back up to the top, you can see where the Studio One is. So if you want to download Studio One, we're going to do two things. We're going to download Studio One, and then we're going to download Universal Control since you have a Personas hardware piece. All right, so let's go ahead and click Download. And if you have Chrome, you can see down here the download starts. And once that is finished, it's going to look like this. There we go. So now let's not move any further with Studio One. Let's get the uh, driver, the universal control option for your hardware. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the plus sign and we're going to go to P-R-E-S-O-N-A-S. And we're going to go to personas.com and we're going to go to products and we're going to look for our audio interface driver. So, and if you have a, there we go, there's the audio box USB 96. So we're going to click on this and we come to the page and we're going to go to downloads. And when you click on downloads, it takes us right to the universal control driver. So let's do this first. Let's download universal control and you can see it came down here. And there we go, it's done. I'm going to click here and say open in folder. If you don't have that option, if you're using a different browser, just go to your downloads folder. You can see here, this is our downloads folder and here are the two pieces that we inst uh, that we downloaded. This is the universal control driver, this is Studio One 5. So what I like to do is I like to take both of these and move them to my desktop. There we go. So let's go up here and close and zoom back out. And now we are going to go ahead and bring these over to the center of the screen just so that, uh, you know, they're in a good place right there. All right. So now with these here, we're going to install Universal Control first. And we're going to right click and we're going to say run as administrator. And uh, you get the Windows security. Just click on yes. And the installer pops up. Now, we're going to do something very simple with this, and if this is your first time installing Universal Control or any kind of a DAW, the default locations and options are your best bet. So we're going to click Next, we're going to click I Agree, we're going to click Next, and then we're going to click Install. It is going to install all of this stuff. I have found that just leaving it the way that it is is the best bet to install all of the pieces it doesn't take up that much room you can try to just download the driver to whatever you have but i like to install them all just to have them there once you do that it's going to come up as finished and then you would just say okay now in this case since i already have it 
I'm not going to go through that. So now we have installed Universal Control. Now we're going to do the same thing with Studio One. We're going to right click. We're going to click Run as Administrator. Of course, this is on a PC. If you're on a Mac, then all you have to do is drag the install file over. So there we go. So now here is Studio One. We're going to click Next, and we're going to Agree, and we're not going to change the location, and we're just going to install. It's going to set up all the file folder locations for everything related to Studio One and Sphere in their default locations. There we go. So once that's done, it'll come up and say Finished. You're just going to literally click Install. It's going to go Next, 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 Finish. You don't have to do anything else to that if this is your first time. Now, if you plan on putting stuff on different drives, we can go through that in a different video. But it's good to start with this and all the default locations. Okay, now we have Studio One and we have Universal Control installed. Now, before you do anything, go to your menu and click on Restart and let the machine restart. This solidifies the drivers for Universal Control. So when it starts up and you log back in, we are here. So you are going to see a Studio One icon and a Studio and a Universal Control icon. First thing you want to do is double click on Universal Control. It's going to open and show you. Yours is going to be blank because you haven't plugged anything in yet. Now, this is the point as to where you plug in your audio box. Your audio box will show up here. You plug in your Atom, and your Atom will show up here. So do them slowly and methodically to where you see the audio box pop up. And then once, that's, once that shows, then plug in your Atom, and then your Atom pops up. Okay, so now you are done with this part. You are done with installing Universal Control. You are done with installing Studio One. So those are all, all set for this. All right, so I'm going to close this. So now we're going to actually open Studio One. And we are going to set up the interface, and then we're going to move on to setting up a song. All right, there we go. So you're going to scan everything that you have here. It's going to do it automatically for you. Shouldn't take too long. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Now my Atom just flashed and it's all dark now because we don't have a song open. So once you are here, if your interface doesn't show up here by default, this is how you actually select it. We're going to go up here to Studio One. We're going to say Options, and we're going to click on the Audio Setup tab right here. Now, what we're going to do is, if you don't see your interface here, you just click this drop down, and if you have the audio box, you're going to select that. That will occupy the box here for the audio device, and then you're going to see all of your settings. Your best bet to start with is a device block size of 512 or 256 to see if that works for you. It depends on what kind of latency you're looking for, and we can go through that in another video. Make sure that the processing is set to minimum, and make sure that the process block size matches what you see here. And if it does, you are good to go. Now the interface and Studio One are set up. If you look on the front of the audio box, if you have an audio box or you have a Studio 2.4, there is a knob that says Mixer. Make sure that that is all the way to the right uh, set to playback so that you can hear everything that comes out of Studio One. We'll go through what the input side of that knob is for at a different time, but there you go. That is it. Studio One is set up and the audio interface is set up for Studio One. From this point, if you want to install some of the options and you want to make sure Studio One is registered, you do the following. We're going to go to Studio One and we're going to go to Activation right here. And we are going to select, if you look closely, use the Activate Personas Sphere. And you say, if you have a standalone version of Studio One, then you would actually activate it this way. But for most people, I think nowadays they're going with the Personas Sphere. It would click on Activate, and you would put in the exact same password that you put in at the Personas Sphere site. 
Same one, same exact one. And that will get you set up with this window here. Once that's all done, you're going to go to Studio One Installation. And now you have a whole bunch of stuff that you can choose to install. This is all the stuff that comes with Studio One by default. All of your loop libraries. You can see I have all of these installed. And then for all the extra goodies, you go to My Purchased Items. And since you have... Personas Sphere, you're going to have a lot of stuff to look at. Look at this list. It goes on for a long, long time, and it is everything that Personas offers. You can install it this way, or you can go to the your Sphere account and install it this way. You would simply click on it, and you would download it, and then double-click on it so that it would install in your Studio One so there you go. That is the entire process to get you set up with the things that you need and with the things that you want when it comes to Sphere, when it comes to actually studio using Studio One, and when it comes to setting up your interface. That is the complete process. It seems like a little bit, but trust me, it's worth it in the end. I hope that that was useful, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.